Uh, I'm Srinivas Akela. I'm from US Bank. Today, I'm going to talk about our journey and case study on using generative AI in contact center space. I have a specific uh, agenda. I'm going to spend some time uh, sharing about US Bank, what do we do as an organization, and our contact center journey in terms of cloud migrations, and then talk about the problems that we think we could solve with generative AI and the lessons we are learning from the pilots that we, we are doing in production and the key takeaways and next steps. With that, I, I'm going to talk about US Bank. US Bank is a fifth largest uh, financial bank in, in United States, and we are currently headquartered in Minneapolis, Minnesota. We do support uh, various business lines like consumer clients, business banking clients, institutional banking and wealth management. We, we have presence in 13 countries uh, globally, uh, including uh, Canada, US, Europe, and we have around 70,000 employees helping various, various uh, clients and customers. Our retail branch uh, uh, presence within US is 2,000 branches across uh, East, West, and south and our current metrics or assets as of last year are 27.5 billion like like any other financial organization we help our customers we interact with our customers in various channels like digital branch banking as well as contact center today i'm going to talk about the contact center engagement with our clients and highlight the journey to Amazon. So back in back in 2019, just just before COVID, we started uh, exploring options to migrate our legacy monolithic contact center or infrastructure to cloud-based solution. And we started that journey with 2019. And with COVID, we had to have solutions where our agents can help the customers by working remotely at home. So our journey to Amazon Connect started in 2019, and we do have around 100 plus global contact centers. So it's a, it's a massive contact center. And it took us a while to migrate all these contact centers while improving the customer experience, building voice bots, and adding a lot of self-servicing capabilities in voice as well as chat channels. In 2024, we migrate, we completed the migrations to Amazon uh, Connect. And we started focusing on transforming our contact center for better customer experience, as well as agent experience or employee experience, as well as operations optimizations or operations efficiencies. So this year, 2025, we started with uh, we we started with exploring generative AI, and the reason why we 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 think generative AI is a great technology for contact centers is we have some specific challenges in contact centers. Unlike other, other channels of engagement in contact centers, we need to provide the customer's service in real time, right? And agents needs to answer or resolve the customer issues in real time by navigating to multiple knowledge bases, multiple systems of record, and multiple CRMs. And depending on the depending on the uh, question or the intent that cust client or customer is uh, trying to resolve, the agent may need to uh, go through significant manual searches ac across knowledge base to find the right answer. Similar to the example previous speakers uh, were sharing, it was it was a manual search, providing getting getting the alert, relevant articles from the knowledge base. So the idea around using generative AI is how generative AI can help with that automation, how generative AI can respond with a with with, with the right answer at the same time in real time. So unlike other channels of engagement like chat, in voice channel like contact center or a customer service center, we we need to take voice as an input and provide that uh, provide answers in in voice so it, it is not just a knowledge search problem it is also a problem with uh, latency 
and voice transcription. And other challenges uh, is after even after the call uh, completion or conversation, conversation completion, the agents also needs to do a lot of case management and case case creations, and they do all that manually by summarizing the customer interaction, note taking, and all that. And today, before generative AI, it, it was all manual, and agents are spending a lot of time. And the third problem that we are also trying to solve with generative AI is because because the agents or the employees are skilled on specific uh, intents or specific job aids, if the customer has an additional question or additional intent that they need help with, they transfer the calls to other agents, which will increase our call handling times and obviously the cost and also the CSAT scores, because now customer needs to wait for more time to get the answer they're looking for. Like, like I explained, that. Generative AI can address most of these these problems, and this is how we think generative AI is powerful. To search the knowledge base, uh, interact knowledge bases, and get the answers, we can use LLM and semantic search or similarity search to generate the right recommendation. And generative AI will also help us to provide the coaching and training for the agents in real time with real-time transcription and providing suggestions to the agents when they are trying to help the customers. It's, it's, it's all could happen in real time. And because the, age, the generative AI can search against various knowledge bases, now you do not have to transfer the calls to other agent. The same agent uh, likely answer the call and that will improve our transfer rates. And for the note taking and summarization, generative AI can take the entire conversation transcript as an input and summarize the conversation. And we can even customize the summarization depending on whether the agent wants to send an email for a follow up, or they want to create a case, or they want to uh, use that information for callbacks. So with, with that, uh, we, we explored a couple of solutions with Amazon. Right. We initially looked into using Amazon Bedrock knowledge bases for solving these knowledge base agents. However, because this is a voice channel, the number one problem that we also want to solve is the latency. As an example, when, when a caller or a customer is interacting with a human, an agent, we need this AI to provide the answers in real time, right? Because if, if there is a latency, then the recommendation may not be useful for the agent and obviously for the customer. So just before agent can use uh, their cognitive skills, the AI needs to provide an answer in real time. So that was a, a critical requirement for, for yeah. this use case. Uh, for that, instead of just using bedrock, we, we used two Amazon services or solutions. One is Amazon Contact Lens, which can uh, transcribe the calls in real time and generate the real time analytics or speech analytics and provide the high level issue in terms of what customer is talking about. And the second, and sorry, I, I hear a little bit of background noise. So if you can go on, that would be great. The second AWS solution that we we used in this in this solution is Amazon Qin Connect, which is the core generative AI orchestrator here, which basically takes the transcripts from contact lens and then uses that transcript to see if there is any intent. For example, during a conversation, not every everything that customer is speaking or agent is uh, speaking may, may be an intent, may not be an intent. Maybe it's just an uh, information. So one of the one of the uh, critical factors in this solution is we are not asking generative AI whatever the customer is saying. We are interacting. We are hitting this Q in Connect or we are hitting this LLM whenever there is a proper 
intent identified from the customer conversation. So the first step in this solution is generating the transcript in real time and identifying the customer intent. And number three, using these LLMs to generate the intent and presenting that intent to the agent. Then the agent will choose whether they want an answer or recommendation for the intent. For example, if, if you take an example of tenured agents or experienced agents, maybe for some intents and some question, they already might, might have an answer. And that's one, one, one scenario. The second scenario is because it's a real time interaction, there could be more than one intent in, in that uh, conversation. So we do not want to generate the recommendations for every intent. We want to give that control back to the agent who is helping the customer to pick and choose for which intent they really need an answer for. So that's why if you look at it, it's, it's a two-step process. One, the q and connect will generate the intent and present it back to the agent. And the agent will choose the intent they want the recommendation then the bedrock uh, along with anthropic cloud model will generate the answer and recommendation in real time and today we are not using any customer data in the solution it is purely this solution is purely based on our us bank knowledge base as uh, troubleshooting articles and procedures and that information is basically fed into a nest3 bucket that's the only input we need to feed into this solution and QN Connect internally generates what you see on the right side. It's all running on the Amazon side. Just for clarity, I added that information. QN Connect internally generates the knowledge bases, vector databases, and rack stores. So from customer point of view or from our point of view, the only input we are feeding to this QN Connect is the knowledge base articles. And internally, that, that S3 bucket will real time change that into a rack a vector search. And, and another another call out which I, I, I'm not depicting in this diagram is tagging in the solution. In, in, in our company, we have different knowledge bases in, in different platforms and different agents supporting and using those knowledge bases. So when, when a customer calls uh, our IVR or contact center and trying to interact with a specific agent skilled on a specific job aid, they only have access to a specific knowledge base. And we want the AI to behave the same way. We don't want AI or this generative AI to search across all the knowledge bases. We want the AI to search against the specific knowledge base. And we control that with a with 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 the concept of tagging within QN Connect, and that will basically go and search a specific knowledge base, catered or written specific to the job aid. So th that that feature is is very helpful for us in terms of uh, providing the right answers for the right calls. So right now this solution is up and running in production. However, we are right now doing a production pilot and when I say production pilot it's limited it's only for specific business lines and for specific group of agents and so far we are we are seeing good results in terms of how the tool is providing the answers how the tool is detecting the intent in real time no latency issues and it's almost uh, real time not even real near real time it's it, it's real time and in terms of what we learned so far are key takeaways from the production pilot. And like you're saying, it's it's not fully scaled. It is still a pilot, only limited a number of employees are using this tech. So what we learned during this course is your the AI is as good as your data, right? So fix your data, which is in this case your knowledge base, right? We 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 developed a automated pipeline which basically also cleanses the knowledge base data removes unnecessary information before we upload this knowledge base to S3 buckets. The second second learning is the QIC or QN Connect or Bedrock internally has as configurations and, and that, that customer can use or client can use to tune their system prompts to cater to, to be specific with the domain. 
domain, right? In this case, if if we are building an agent, which is very specific to do a specific task on a specific data or knowledge base, it's also important to provide the right instruction to that agent through bedrock guardrails or QAC guardrails. And that should be designed in collaboration with your SMEs, product partners, and business line. And, and apart from system prompts, we also added, and still we are tuning those uh, pro uh, prompt, prompt guardrails to prevent the prompt injections, because you're not designing this tag for it, for to solve the agent problem. You're also designing this tag for bad actors. So it's important you, you configure the right guardrails to prevent uh, from bad actors. So that's all controlled, not just with prompting, it's uh, it's also with the uh, temperature controls and what is the right uh, uh, right accuracy that we want, to, we want to use. All that is controlled via uh, this bedrock configurations exposed via QIC. And hallucinations are handled uh, not just with uh, with the data rag, it's also with the model. So we also have an ability through Amazon to change the model that we want to use and continuously evolve. And and more importantly, because like any other any other tech, we wanted we realized it's important to have an automated observability tooling for monitoring. So right now we are we are trying to implement llama index based uh, llm as a judge models or amazon bedrock llm evaluator framework we are exploring because you it's not it's not about just deploying a generative ai solution you also need to focus on how you're monitoring how you're detecting the issues how you're uh, configuring your alerts for for change management etc so automated rack pipelines performance tuning and using something like a llama index or bedrock evaluation is also critical for success with that we want to continue to experiment these pilots until we get to the results right that that we are looking for like the ahd reductions fcr reductions and better customer service and we are also currently gathering uh, with uh, gathering the feedback from from our agents business line and product partners to identify what is the right right segment for this tool for this technology uh, right for example like i mentioned if you give this tool to experienced agents and if if they only know the answer they may not be using this tool so we want to we want to identify and scope what who needs to use this kind of tech right that's that's the same exercise we are continue doing it and we are going to continue to model the performance so that we can scale this solution to enterprise contact center uh, right now that option is limited but we want we would like to uh, expand but for that we we need to monitor in real time along with generative ai we, ju we just started using generative ai however we want to explore agentic AI, MCP, and more importantly, also put this tag in front of customers so that we we can we we can provide better self service, better digital or voice experience to our customers too. With, with that, I, I'm going to share my contact information. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'm happy to brainstorm and learn learn with from the community about how other customers are solving similar problems and how we can learn from each other uh, with that i thank everyone for uh, giving the opportunity for us bank to share their case study and i will now hand over the control to sashi for the closer thank you